It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Simchat Torah, Take It All In. If you look at Simchat Torah, of course, it follows Sukkot. And, uh, and in Sukkot, uh, the great festivity was the Simchat Beit HaShoeva. It was a great Simcha where they drew the waters uh, for the libation of the water on the altar. Perhaps as a prayer to God, they should have a good season of rain. However, the Yushalmi says, it's not just, Jerusalem Talmud says, not just that they drew water, but they drew Ruach HaKodesh. In addition to the water, they were drawing inspiration. And uh, in fact, Yonah, the prophet Jonah, he became a prophet through the waters of inspiration, through the drawing of inspiration on this holiday, showing up in the base of Mikdash on, uh, uh, on Sukkot was a way of getting inspiration, in fact, even divine prophecy. And in fact, Yonah the prophet, that's where he got his prophecy from. It seems that a- after Yom Kippur, you might think that we're done. You have Yom Kippur, you atone for your sins, you're cleansed, you, that's it. But actually, we try to go to the next step. Yom Kippur was just the first step to get rid of the negative, get rid of the sins. But where you, when do you go into the next level where now that you're cleansed of your sins, you can draw spiritual inspiration? That's Sukkot. And uh, true wisdom and understanding can only come after cleansing, the removing of the sins. Second reason that it's, a, it's ripe for inspiration on this time is because you can't have Ruach HaKodesh out of sadness. You have to have it through joy. And simcha, simcha, uh, the Simcha of, of Sukkos is so great that it brings tremendous joy. And from joy, you can have inspiration. As we know, Prophet uh, Shaul became a prophet somehow for a brief time, King Saul. However, when he was so sad, he couldn't have the prophecy. He needed David to play the harp, and only then could he have prophecy. So we see that uh, inspiration, the Ruach HaKodesh, the prophecy that Jonah got, requires a simcha. So the simcha is the shoeva. It's also the simcha that allows the shoeva. It's the simcha, the joy that allows you to draw that inspiration. The, the Ramam writes in the t- ninth chapter of the Laws of Tshuva that Lo Nitavu Yisrael, that the Jews did not desire Mashiach, you think the Jews want to take over the world. No, Chas Vashom, God forbid. The Jews desire the days of the Messiah because today the, the nations don't let us rest. We have attacks from Hamas, from Hezbollah, from Iran. We can't rest. But in the end of days, you'll, uh, Margoa, we will have peace of mind, Quiet, and then we'll have greater wisdom. Only when you have peace of mind can you have greater wisdom. So, uh, so that's that's the goal. That after uh, after Yom Kippur, where we can get rid of all those sins, it gives us that kind of peace of mind, so we can indeed march forward for Sukkos and have inspiration. However, there's a third element. We mentioned the idea of that after the sins, we're ready to have extra wisdom. We mentioned the idea that out of joy you can have great clarity and wisdom, but there's a third element, and that is that you have to get rid of the Sutton. It's very nice that you don't have any sins, but then the Satan the, can come, that you can have evil inclination can come and try to seduce us back into sin again. So that's the problem. So the Lulav is designed to fight against it. We say that the, the Gemara says that dog Yirab ain't in the Sina. Gemara says something that's controversial, maybe we shouldn't say it, but even though we don't say it, it doesn't mean it's not true. That this, this uh, lulav is actually an, a, an arrow in the eye of the Satan. That, uh, that it's like a pointer, it's like a, it's like a stick in the eye of the Satan. That it protects us, the lulav is sort of like a protection, a shield against the... Um, against the... Uh, the Satan, any kind of uh, satanic, any sort of evil inclination kind of feelings that we have, the lulav is like a protection against it. Also, uh, the, uh, the Gemara seems to say that that it was specifically for the simple space of Shueva, they put up a machitza, that they put up a balcony. The women were over here, the men were over there, they tried different ways of separating the men and women. What's the idea? We're trying to defeat the Yitzhar. 
You might think that, oh, I, it's a great idea. The Satan will love it. I'll get all the men and the women together in the base of Mikdash, and then they'll be too frivolous, and people will begin to sin. So he said, ah, we're going we're gonna to fix that. We're going to separate the men and the women, and that's where the idea of mechitza and separating men and women in shuls comes from. That you want to defeat the equal inclination that when a person is in shul, not thinking about men, and we're not thinking about women, women are not thinking about men, everything's more pristine. And uh, therefore the Gemara launches at that point in page 52a, uh, they launch into a whole discussion of the defeat of the Eight Sahara, that one day the, the Eight Sahara, the evil inclination will be defeated and wicked people will say, boy, that, well, I can't believe we couldn't overcome that. And the righteous people will say, wow, that's like a mountain. I, I can't believe we overcame the evil inclination. It's a tough thing. Why are we talking about this in Sukkah? And why are we talking about this in, in connection with the, with the uh, Mechitza of the Simchas Be'ez Shreva, the great celebration of Sukkot? Because it was there that, that we tried to defeat the, the, evil, the evil inclination. With the defeat of the evil, evil inclination, now we can have clarity, now we can have inspiration, now we can have Ruach HaKodesh, now we can have prophecy. Today we don't necessarily have prophecy, we're waiting for prophecy to come back. But what we do have is simple Torah. We do have the opportunity to learn Torah, and we hope that through this process of cleansing of sins, Yom Kippur, joy, defeating of the Yitzhar, cleansing from sins, all those processes, we hope that by the time we get to Simchas Torah, we're really ready to acquire the Torah anew, to open the Torah again afresh, and to, uh, to enjoy all the lessons of the Torah once again. And that's why it's Atzeres. Atzeres means it's, it's, uh, you gather everyone together, but you're also gathering all the forces, all the forces of Yom Kippur, the, of the forgiveness, all the forces of the Simcha, the joy of Sukkot, all the forces of defeating the evil inclination, beating that Arava to death on Oshana Rabbah, all of these forces make it, you're able to gather together, to gather together all these forces and bring your greatest inspiration. And that's why it's also the Chag HaAsif, Sukkot is the time when we gather the crops, not just physical crops, but the spiritual crops as well. Let's hope that this Simchas Torah we can gather all the forces that we, all the wonderful forces that we've mustered through Rosh Hashanah and the days of repentance and Yom Kippur and the joy of Sukkot and the clarity of mind of the Sukkah and the Lulav and the fighting off of the evil inclination, that we'll be ready to study Torah, ready to get as much inspiration as one can get today, which is to study Torah, which is to learn, which is to teach, which is to try to get new ideas. Rosh Hashanah says, the Yerushalmi says, Ein beis mesh below chidish there's no such thing as a house of study where there isn't something new every day. Let's hope that this year we can find something new every day, new and exciting, make it, the Torah is so exciting that we can, every day we look at Rashi, Ramban, Ibn Ezra, we look at Gemara, Daf Yomi, we look at whatever we're learning, and we have new inspiration, new ideas, and maybe one day we'll get to a point where we can have, once again, the greatest inspiration, inspiration of prophecy, the coming of Eliyahu and Navi will come and prophesy. Indeed, Mashiach is coming, and why is that important? Because that'll be an era where we're able uh, to study with Margoa with peace of mind, and that would be the greatest blessing. Thank you for joining us here for the discussion of Simchas Torah. Join us each week for the discussion of the Parsha and the holidays. Thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer, and thanks to the Wagerman family, Howard and Mindy Wagerman, for sponsoring the, the webcast this, this week. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein.